I think in uh, Asia as well as in other parts of the world, what we need to do is develop strong and bold policies to scale up uh, low emission hydrogen, particularly for those sectors which are hard to electrify or hard to abate sectors, they call them like industry, heavy duty, transportation, You're talking about trucks, about ships, about airplanes, as well as uh, long-term energy storage, because we need to have storage of energy for weeks and months, and that for that also hydrogen, low emission hydrogen is one of the few options available. How are we going to do this? How do we need to do this? We need to do this by developing strong and bold policies, as I said, on the demand. So really create clear demand signals of how large the demand for low emission hydrogen will be in 2030, 2040 and 2050, as well as develop strong policies to support the scaling up of the supply of uh, low emission hydrogen because just like with solar and wind electricity in the past we need uh, subsidies we need other strong policies to support the development and the uh, scaling up of the supply of low emission hydrogen last but not least we need to develop infrastructure by repurposed gas pipelines and also by uh, port infrastructure uh, other infrastructure developments to connect the supply sources of low emission hydrogen, both renewable hydrogen as well as hydrogen with carbon capture and storage with the demand centers because they will not always be in the same place. For instance, demand will be concentrated very much around industries and the supply sources may be further away. So you need infrastructure to connect the supply sources with uh, the demand centers. Well, first of all, IPHE is a uh, government uh, to government uh, global network which uh, assembles about uh, uh, more than 20 countries from around the world, from Asia, from uh, Africa, from the Americas, from the Middle East, as well as the European Commission. So global network, which uh, focuses on exchanging the latest developments in policy making. So trying to learn from each other on how are hydrogen policies developing and what can we learn from each other? What are the good practices and what are also the mistakes to avoid in the future going forward. Um, secondly, apart from the more general policy development exchanges, IPHE is also working very concretely on regulatory issues, on codes and standards, for instance, in the area of safety uh, or in the area of uh, mobility infrastructure. And this is kind of work that tries to pave the way to have a healthy and fast development of the, the global commodity market that hydrogen, low emission hydrogen is going to become. It is not yet there, but it can become a very important global commodity market and to pave the way towards that, IPHE is working on uh, common standard setting and common methodologies, which as IPHE is not a standard setting body itself, but it can help kind of pave the way so that at the global level, for instance, by ISO, which is a global standard setting body, that ISO can pick up the work uh, that the preliminary work that has been done by IPHE to, in order to, uh, to accelerate the global trade in low emission hydrogen. First, 
priority is uh, for IPHE is to to develop a common methodology of how to calculate the carbon intensity of uh, hydrogen production uh, conversion into carriers as well as transporting the hydrogen to uh, receiving countries of hydrogen produced uh, in producing countries but that's a very important uh, topic for the development of trade in low emission hydrogen IPHE has already made great progress in developing such a common methodology for the carbon intensity of hydrogen produced through different production pathways from renewable hydrogen to hydrogen produced from fossil fuels with carbon capture and storage. They've already used uh, and, and, and produced a document on this for hydrogen produced. Now they're working on also how it how that then that hydrogen produced is going to be converted and what is the carbon intensity of different ways of uh, uh, converting that hydrogen and having different carriers for that hydrogen as well as the way of transporting the hydrogen. So that's the first priority and that should lead to, uh, to ISO standards at the global level. Secondly, it is uh, a priority to develop standards for or to help develop standards for uh, uh, bulk storage of hydrogen also very important for trade as well as using hydrogen in the in shipping in the uh, sector of shipping 